O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 145, verses 8 through 13. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, your dominion endures throughout the ages. Psalm 126 When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. Jesus said, No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar but on the lampstand, so that those who may enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. Therefore consider whether the light in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light with no part of it in darkness, it will be as full of light as when a lamp gives you light with its rays. The word of the Lord. Today, the Church commemorates Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyon. If theology is thinking about faith and arranging those thoughts in some systematic order, then Irenaeus has been rightly recognized by Catholics and Protestants alike as the first great systematic theologian. There is considerable doubt about the year of Irenaeus' birth. Estimates vary from 97 to 160. It is certain that he learned the Christian faith in Ephesus, at the feet of the venerable Polycarp, who in turn had known John the Evangelist. Some years before 177, probably while Irenaeus was still in his teens, he carried the tradition of Christianity to Lyon in southern France. His name means the peaceable one, and suitably so. The year 177 brought hardship to the mission in Gaul. Persecution broke out, and a mounting tide of heresy threatened to engulf the church. Arrhenius, by now a presbyter, was sent to Rome to mediate the dispute regarding Montanism, which the bishop of Rome, Eleutherus, seemed to embrace. While Arrhenius was on this mission, the aged bishop of Lyon, Pothinus, died in prison during a local persecution. When Arrhenius returned to he was elected bishop to cede Pothinus. Irenaeus's enduring fame rests mainly on a large treatise entitled The Refutation and Overthrow of Gnosis, falsely so-called, usually shortened to against heretics. In it, Irenaeus describes the major Gnostic systems thoroughly, clearly, and often with biting humor. It is one of our chief sources of knowledge about Gnosticism. He also makes a case for Christianity, which has become a classic, resting heavily on scripture and on the continuity between the teaching of the apostles and the teaching of bishops, generation after generation, especially in the great sea cities. Against the Gnostics, who despised the flesh and exalted the spirit, he stressed two doctrines, that of the creation as good and that of the resurrection of the body. A late and uncertain tradition claims that he suffered martyrdom about 202. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you upheld your servant Arrhenius with strength to maintain the truth against every blast of vain doctrine. Keep us, we pray, steadfast in your true religion, that in constancy and peace we may walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered along on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is another day, O Lord. We know not what it will bring forth, but make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If we are to stand up, help us to stand bravely. If we are to sit still, help us to sit quietly. If we are to lie low, help us to do it patiently. And if we are to do nothing, let us do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give us the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.